I was on the first rides of the original Texas Giant back in 1990. I mean, it was a worldwide sensation. People were coming from everywhere to experience that when it opened. It opened as the tallest wooden roller coaster in the world. So of course, it was it was just going to be incredibly incredibly famous. But the Texas Giant was part of an era of gigantic wooden coasters that started showing huge gigantic maintenance issues. When I had been talking with uh, Larry Chicola and Fred and uh, the guys at Magic Mountain was to save the cyclone down there originally. And we had bid on it, talked about it, and they just decided at that time that, uh, you know, earthquake upgrades, stuff like that. Basically, the coaster was too far gone. And for the next couple of years, all of us had been thinking about it. And the Texas Giant was the next one that came up for a chance. Steve Martindale was the general manager, and he said, I can't picture the park without the Texas Giant, but I can't picture us running it the way it is now. Six Flags Over Texas called and said, well, we need a traditional retrack on the Texas Giant for our 50th anniversary. And all they wanted was the Texas Giant just traditionally retracked with the same profile. RMC provided two bids to Six Flags. We provided the traditional retrack bid as well as our new iBox bid. When Six Flags, specifically Larry Giacolo, said, we would like to really take a serious look at this, and I said, well, uh, we can do it and just come look at our samples. And he says, well, well, uh, there would be some guys there in the morning. Fred was like, oh my gosh, I don't, I, okay, sure, we'll see you then, I'll pick you up at the airport. Wow, they're gonna fly in in the morning and we, we are in trouble because we don't have any samples. I went over to a friend who has a big shop, big steel shop, and, and I said, Grant, I, I need this favor, and, and he said, you got it. We spent all night welding up these two pieces of track. They had cut the flat patterns, we hauled them over to that shop and we welded all night. We, I had another buddy go in and paint them. When we were driving into the uh, to the shop over there, the painter was leaving and he was shaking his head like, no, and I knew the paint was still wet. I was just like, oh man, what are we gonna do? So Fred drives up and was like, oh fellas, we're gonna go see where we cut the steel. Went to my other buddy's shop and we were showing them around and a couple hours later, we went back to the shop where we welded the samples up. Then they come back and they see the iBox track and it, I mean, it looked good. It was in our parking lot and it's perfect. And my dad was like, he was thrilled. He was so excited to show it off. And um, I think they were impressed too because pretty soon, pretty soon after that, we got um, our first contract. I was elated. And I was walking up and down the hall. I, I can't believe they just gave it to us. And, you know, and they just called us and said, you have the job, let's get going. And I was just like, oh my God. Holy cow. We have to actually figure this all out now, you know? We had no, we basically had no tools. I mean, we just had small tools, but no heavy equipment. Um, we had one small shop and um, about 10 employees, and that was it. And we had no um, engineer on staff other than Alan that was in Utah. Originally, Six Flags put us together. I had the contract to do the engineering. Fred had the contract to do the construction on the Texas Giant. And they said, hey, why don't you just make it easy on us? and form a collaboration and give us one bid. And that's really why we started working long-term together. So after we got the Texas Giant contract, my dad said, Amy, you gotta learn AutoCAD now. And I said, oh my gosh, I, you know, I didn't go to school for this. I don't know how to use AutoCAD. He goes, you can do it. If I can learn it, Amy, you can learn it. And I said, okay, well, I don't have a computer. It'll run it. So I went to my local office max and walked in the door and a salesman walked up to me and said, can I help you? And I said, I need a computer. And he asked me what I needed to run on it. And I said, AutoCAD. And his ears perked up and it was our, um, it was our employee, Jake. It turns out OfficeMax is a great place to meet small business out there. <laughs> master's degree in architecture. I was looking to design houses, so I wasn't, <laughs> wasn't going to draw roller coasters. And they said they were looking for somebody to do a little bit of design work in AutoCAD, and I said, oh, you know, what are you looking for? And 
they said stuff that I didn't understand. I didn't know what they were talking about. I said, what time do you get off? He said, three. I said, come in right after you get off. And I said, don't dress up, don't wear a tie. You just wear jeans and a t-shirt, whatever you want to wear, and come talk to me. And my dad, and he said, are you serious? And I said, I'm, I'm dead serious. Fred did a lot of, uh, can you get her done? And uh, what do you think? And all that, and well, at the time, I just, I needed a better job. So I was like, yeah, sure. I had no idea what he was talking about. And so Fred said, you have the job. And then Jake and my dad and Alan figured out how to manufacture eyelock strap. 